What is the most ridiculous thing about your game? Press oh. X to pay respect. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Oh, that F, was F to respect. I can't believe that made it in the game. That is, it's embarrassing. This is Versus, the GameSpot show that pits your favourite games, consoles, franchises and hot button issues against one another. This week, we're going to war as we pit Uber franchises Battlefield and Call of Duty against one another. Arguing the case for Call of Duty is Will Potter, who once drove to three separate branches of Sainsbury's trying to look for a copy of Modern Warfare 2. He later bought it again for £3.50 just last week. And fighting for Battlefield is Dave Jewett, who got this excited when talking about Battlefield 5 on camera. So much in this Battlefield, I'm so <laughs> excited about it, damn. Each are going to argue the corner for their game over the course of three randomly selected topics, with the overall winner being decided by you, the wonderful viewers. Last week's battle royale between PUBG and Fortnite saw Dave defeat, uh, me and PUBG with 57% of the vote for his Fortnite argument. But it's an absolute disgrace and I demand a recount. Anyway, to vote on this episode, we're going to be throwing up a clickable poll right here on YouTube. Vote for who you think argued their case better by clicking on the little eye in the top right corner at any point during the video and casting your vote. Or if you're watching this on GameSpot.com, let us know who you think has won the debate in the comments section below. Right, let's get into the debate. Alright, Bill. Dave, we meet again. Yeah, I beat you last time, didn't I? Alright, look, you you know a lot about first person shooters, so I am yeah. a bit nervous going into this, because you know your stuff. We've got a loot box, or what looks like a loot box. Yes, are we it on should, the... It should like fall in from the sky, oh. and then like burst open and three cards Ooh. pop out, and you I get like a, a legendary hat. I've got a shiny gun. <laughs> right, <laughs> first topic then. Gameplay. Well, I think um, Battlefield has the superior gameplay. Mm. For me, Call of Duty has always been, it's just an arcade arena. Whereas for me, Battlefield has the core of our games, the shooting, way more down than Call of Duty does. But Battlefield, every gun has a different muzzle velocity, has different drop, has different range. Things like sniping is, is, is way more satisfying because you actually have to line up the shot, aim way above their head, or at least or, or like range your target, and then you get to see the bullets go Whereas if you're a Call of Duty player, you just left trigger, right trigger, quick scope, hit marker, dead. But I don't want to be doing maths while I'm playing a game. The maths just aim above them. Well, you, it sounds like you're doing like geometry or whatever. Trigonometry. I failed maths, so I play <laughs> Call of Duty. <laughs> Call um, of Duty is like a roller coaster. It's it funnels you down this exciting path and. It feels so immersive, and I think because it's like a roller coaster, you, you're just in for the ride. I'm a bit more casual than you in terms of shooters, right? I'm not thinking about, was it muzzle velocity? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> it sounds complicated. It's because you're a Call of Duty player. Yeah, I just want to shoot stuff, have a good time. It's so immersive, and you feel that you are there with your squad, with the troopers, um, See, whether I, it's... I completely disagree. I think. Battlefield's way more immersive. And you use the roller coaster analogy. Mm. If, if Call of Duty is a roller coaster, Battlefield is the entire theme park. It's got way more rides, way more attractions. The maps are enormous. The average Battlefield map, there'll be long distance ranges that you can have long distance engagements. There'll be buildings that you can do close quarters combat. You have vehicles that you can engage with, land, sea, and air. That's three extra rides in my theme park <laughs> than just your poxy roller coaster in your back garden. Yeah, but in Battlefield you spend so much time wandering around and you get sniped in the head and you don't know where it was from. You don't have to spend your time wandering around. If you want to go into the hills and get your ghillie suit on and snipe, then yeah, sure, go wander around. But if you want to get close quarters into the action, then you squad up, you work with your team, you go in and play the objective. Like, the, the term PTFO exists in Battlefield. No one says play the f***ing objective in Call of Duty. <laughs> Battlefield, you have objectives and you're rewarded for pursuing these objectives and you feel driven to pursue these objectives. And when you have, what, like 64 people in a map and you've got 31 other teammates just storming this objective all at once, it's like, it sounds wanky, but it does feel quite epic. From what I've played of Battlefield, I just end up trying to do that and then I get detached from my squad or it's I'm... Not, it's not Battlefield's fault. I think it is. It's your, it's, your, it's your fault. I think Call of Duty is way more quick and fun and anyone can pick it up and play and you don't have to worry about, you know... You can play with a team if you want to and yeah, you'll do better, but if you just want to run around shooting your M16, yeah, you can do that and it's still fun. Next topic, single player. 
I've got this in the bag, surely. I mean... You are a single player. <laughs> <laughs> I actually play mostly single player for Call of Duty games. You've got everything from World War II campaigns, uh, landing on D-Day, and playing Call of Duty World War II. It was emotional. You know, you're re constantly reminded that this happened, and it's respectful in the single player. If you press F, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think from the characters to the setting to the missions, I think Call of Duty has it so much better than, than Battlefield. There are so many memorable moments from Call of Duty campaigns, like uh, No Russian, which shocked everyone. And you've got like the nuke dropping in Modern Warfare. Right the way up to Infinite Warfare, which I loved. It basically had the plot of Mobile Suit Gundam, which you know I love. You had a robot companion, and I think that robot companion was better than any character in any Battlefield game. Like, he was funny, he was this, like, death machine who also cracked jokes. I'm sorry, I think, I think <coughs> Call of Duty, hand, hands down, has this one. So you really think Call of Duty has really good campaigns? Yeah. If they were that good, why isn't Black Ops 4 getting one? That's a question for a later video. Is it? Um, is it though? I hope they're not gone for good. I hope we see more campaigns in the future. What about Battlefield? Like, does anyone actually play the campaigns? Yeah, I, I, I've really enjoyed the campaigns in Battlefield. The Battlefield War stories from BF1 were actually staggering. Okay. Each one of them was like a, a, a small World War I movie. The characters were written really well. It, was, it wasn't constrained by one single area or character or piece. You, you get like a whole smorgasbord of all these World War I experiences. But Battlefield has also shown that it, it, it has multiple feathers in its cap. It's done comedy in the uh, Battlefield Bad Company series. That's had some some of the best action-packed moments and some of the best comic relief characters. It's the variety in Battlefield. And I know a lot of people in Battlefield, they don't come for the campaign, yet it's still trying to craft its own story. I think it's, it's very respectable. And then our new one has single player. So <laughs> <laughs> that's the V in Battlefield V. I, I mean, yes, Battlefield has had some good moments, but I think consistently, and actually, historically, going back to the first Call of Duty, it's had that campaign experience. And it's had World War II, it's had Vietnam, it's had Modern Warfare, which is, which came out just a few years after. Like, this, it's, it's a very post 9-11 game. Um, and the threat felt so real that that's what made the game feel very much like, yes, this is like, believable, this is. Battlefield tackled similar, similar things. It was, it was still in the same mindset that a lot of the more modern Call of Duty games were. Hmm. And I think it, it, it created an intimacy in, in the squad that you had, and it was much more of a tactical approach. But you don't have a funny robot or a man called Soap. No, we don't have a man called Soap. That's Mr. McTavish to you. <laughs> uh, oh, multiplayer. Should have seen that coming after the last one was <laughs> single player. Um, I mean, I think Battlefield easily takes multiplayer just for the fact that it's got way more than Call of Duty has and probably ever will. The original Battlefield 1942 is considered one of those like lofty famous games that changes or drives forward a genre. It managed to give 64 players at any one time this amazing Battlefield sandbox. It expanded into the modern day with Battlefield 2. I, I, I have still f have fond memories of Battlefield 2 of these massive squad fights. Engineers destroying bridges, then our team engineers trying to repair bridges or lay down new ones so we can get tanks across. There's a reason why there's that term like Battlefield moments, because there's, there's certain things in Battlefield multiplayer that can only happen in Battlefield. There's just an incredible amount of variety and I've never got that from Call of Duty. There's a reason why I had hundreds of hours in Battlefield 3, because that was one of the that was one of the crowning FPS games for me. It, it changed so much and it brought so much to like the, the the first person shooter table that it was just unbeatable for me. The other reason you spent hundreds of hours playing that game is because it take, takes so long to learn. No it doesn't. And it's it's way more sort of complicated and difficult to play and it's just not as accessible as Call of Duty. After that glorious single player campaign that you've just finished, which was glorious by the way. Which, which one are we talking about now? Any of them. You go nope. into multiplayer, which was my tradition. I would finish the campaign yeah, and then go, same, right, same. multiplayer time. 
I've learned all the skills I need for multiplayer. And right off the bat, it's quick, it's close, it's intimate. Call of Duty multiplayer is so much more sort of quick and, and, and more rewarding, I think. Like, you name some good moments about Battlefield, but I think they're few and far between. I like earning things quicker, and I like constant rewards because I'm a child. <laughs> I like that da -da -da -da, when you rank up and you're like, you're a sergeant now, you've got this cool new camouflage pattern for your you gun. You get weed on your shotgun. Yeah, That's man, sick. I'm going to 360 no scope. And you've we never 360 no scoped anyone in your life. No. You are rewarded so often in Call of Duty that I feel like I am not wasting my time playing. I've dropped into battlefield matches, run around a desert for ages, and then got shot in the head after five minutes. I'm like, well, that wasn't very fun. It's because you run towards the flag, Bill. No. P PTFO was designed for people like you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pull out my ace card. Zombies. Some yeah. people play Call of Duty just for that. I put many hours into all of the zombie modes and... I'll agree with you, I played Kino the Totem like anything else as well. But we're not talking about zombies here, Bill. We're talking about it, It's part of the multiplayer, so we have to talk about it. You can't just say, oh, Battlefield doesn't have it. So. It could be also part of the single player, play it by itself. True. UAV online. Yeah, see, we don't need UAVs because <laughs> we can spot and use our God-given sight. I bet you're up to a screen like this, like... I'm going to snipe someone from approximately three kilometers with my so-and-so gun. That's too far. It's ridiculous. Look, you're the one that does all the maths in games, so yeah, whatever. I don't care. I just got cool guns, like digital camo. And six-year-olds shouting about sleeping with your parents. Oh, I, I can mute them. It's not, not a big issue. So the final takeaway from that is that Dave likes maths and Will gets verbally abused online. But more importantly, who do you think won the debate? Let us know by voting on our poll in the top right corner of the video, or if you're over on GameSpot.com, by putting your thoughts in the comments section below. It'll be your votes that decide who wins, so make yourselves heard. Right, time for this week's quickfire round, a series of dumb, fun questions written by the rest of the UK team. Let's see how Will and Dave got on. What is the most ridiculous thing about your game? Press X to pay respect. <laughs> oh god, yeah. Oh, that F, was... F to respect. That was... I can't believe that made it in the game. That is, it's embarrassing, frankly. Being, a, being able to put two, two fellas with flamethrowers on a horse, that was pretty cool though. It's Ridiculous. Hyper-realistic. Yeah, yeah. That's, why, that's why I like Battlefield. <laughs> that level of realism. <laughs> Mur immersion. Do an impression of your favourite gun. <clears throat> I'll do the M1 Grand. It goes... <laughs> it's a laughing gun, is it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it goes... <laughs> Stupid. Okay. <clears throat> Bing. Only one bullet in the thing, was there? Well, that was my last shot. What is the wankiest phrase publishers slash developers have used to describe your franchise? I mean, the Levolution is still, like, Ugh. one of the shittiest buzzwords Ugh. going. I do not want to hear boots on the ground ever again. <laughs> I'm so sick of that. I won't even wear yeah. boots anymore. Which franchise would win in an office away day paintball fight? <laughs> Battlefield. Battle there's more of you. There's more of you. Yeah, but COD. SWAT teams. More accurate. SWAT versus actual Marines. Like, you don't need what numbers. You, think? you just you need a small squad going, precision, headshots all around. What special dead. forces work in an office? This is a hypothetical scenario. There's 64 of us against your, what, 12? That's all we need. Have you seen the film 300? We don't have guns. <laughs> if the Persians had guns, those, those guys would be f They also lost. <laughs> they did as well. <laughs> <laughs> you put up a great fight, Bill, but you f lost. Well, it's the effort that counts, really. Remember to get your voice heard in our poll or in the comments section below and tell us who you think argued their case better. And if you enjoyed this episode of Versus, make sure to hit that subscribe button as we'll have new episodes of the show every Wednesday. Thanks for watching. See ya!